Hi, I'm Dr Sandra Cabot and I'm here today with Dr Marvin Anderson, who is a medical doctor who specialises in autism and internal medicine. And we're talking about a very important subject and that is how we can reduce the risk of autism and indeed how we can prevent most cases. And this really starts when a woman is planning to conceive, so it's good, you know, to really think about this and really get yourself healthy before you conceive, and then during the pregnancy, and then during the first several years of your child's life. So we're going to look at these factors that anybody can think about and achieve to protect themselves. So it's uh, great to be with you, Dr. Anderson. Thank you. Yeah. So let's talk about preconception, you know, what are the most important things that a woman can do uh, to reduce the chance of her child being autistic? Well, uh, Dr. Cabot, there is a, um, nutrition is, is, is critical. Yes. You know, and I think first of all, we could uh, just take a quick look at what our food supply looks like these days. Yes. You know? <laughs> there are four things that are terrible with it. The first thing is, is that we choose the wrong foods to begin with. Yeah and so that we get what we, what we choose. Mm. The second thing is, is that the food is nutritionally impoverished because Correct. it's grown on depleted soil. Yes. The yes. third thing is that there are tremendous amounts of uh, petrochemicals and agricultural chemicals that are put onto the soil and work their way into the food supply. Yes. And the fourth thing is a little known fact, but there have been filling fertilizer with industrial waste and dumping that on the soil. Yes. So this is another mm. source of contamination. So our food supply is terrible. So yeah. using a whole fresh, pure, nutrient-dense foods, you know, mm. preferably, strongly, preferably organic, is a cornerstone. Yeah. And if you take a woman that is thinking about becoming pregnant, even before, as you say, before she becomes pregnant, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a preconditioning that has to come about. Yes. And, the, and the preconditioning would relate to getting... Um, her uh, her toxic load, you know, down as much as possible. Yes, and then also, uh, and then also, uh, conditioning her immune system so it's not hyperactive, but it's not underactive. That's true. And mm. so avoidance of uh, of dangerous uh, substances at the same time removing the ones that are present, and then giving her some sort of nutritional support. Now, what does that look like? Yes. Well, first of all. Um, the essential nutrients are, are really important. Selenium is important. Yes. You know, if it's not present, give selenium methionine. Yes. Vitamin D, get sunlight. Yes. Vitamin C, you know, bell peppers and, and citrus and in berries. Uh, iodine, vitamin E and avocados. You know, zinc is important for different chemicals that move metals out. Mm. Omega-3 fatty acids are important. Yes. You know, and you Definitely. can get them in fish oil like Carlson's or... Or, yes. um, Nordic Naturals, yes. you also um, flax oil, walnuts, yeah. you know. Chia seeds. Uh, chia seeds. They're a good source. A absolutely. Seeds I are a good source. Seeds are a good oils. source. And, and, and hemp seeds. Hemp seeds. Yes. And iodine is uh, really important, you know. It is. And it can be obtained mm. from sea vegetables. True. You know. And a lot of supplements have uh, iodine as well. Yes. Uh, that's very important. And as you say, um, you know, condition your immune system and your liver um, for six months, ideally, oh, before yes. you conceive. You know, and, and, and look, looking at the liver a little bit, you know, yes. it's important for, to remember two things. First of all, the detoxification occurs very well if we eat a lot of cruciferous vegetables, cruciferous vegetables, yes. you know, cabbage, sour, cabbage, uh, uh, Brussels sprouts, yeah, cauliflower, cauliflower, mm. you know, uh, bok choy, yes, yes, kale, broccoli. Yeah. Now these are sulfur, sulfur rich compounds, yeah. and and these these environmental toxins leave the body, riding out attached to sulfur. Yes, so they do. Now we mm. have to also support that regimen with a good liver uh, supporting herb. Yes. And some of the things we think about are, you know, are silymarin, yes, uh, and taurine, yes, and the components of glutathione, you know, the, that's right. And yes. uh, and also B vitamins. Yes. You know, those are and acetylcysteine, you know, all that's those right. things are, are very important. Uh, and then uh, that then that the, the uh, if the woman is in a is in good condition, you know, she'll be healthy. The baby 
will be healthy, have a much lower incidence, not only of autism, but of other illnesses, like you, I think, mentioned cancer and yes. also allergic diseases. Mm. And, um, and she can cleanse the baby then even through her breast milk, you know? Yes, that's yes. right. Well, breastfeeding is, is wonderful. If you can do it, um, it's good to persist. You know, a lot of women have problems trying to breastfeed, cracked mm. nipples and things like that. And, you know, with caesarean sections, the milk doesn't always come in as quickly. And there's a lot of factors, but the key with breastfeeding is to persist. And to keep persist. Persist and keep putting the baby on the nipple. And, you know, the breastfeeding is wonderful because it's the highest source of omega-3 fats. Oh. Yeah, breast milk is the highest source of omega-3 fats you can find in the world, you know, even higher than fish. So it's wonderful you can do it. But um, if you can't breastfeed, I think, um, you know, it's very important to make sure that you're giving the child omega-3 fatty acids in some form, you know, adding it to the formula uh -huh. that they're having in their bottle. Um, and you can get um, formula foods that are fortified with omega-3. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very, very important. You know, there's mm. another factor that we should bring in here, and that's autoimmune disease in the family. Yes. yes. Um, you know, what are we talking about? Maybe type 1 diabetes or rheumatoid arthritis or, mm. or, or, or Crohn's or uh, celiac disease, you yeah, know? Definitely. These things, if they're present in the family, they raise a red flag. Yes. And, uh, and take celiac disease for an example. Uh, the incidence of autism is much higher. In, yes. in celiac patients, mm. and just by uh, uh, avoiding uh, gluten, you know, yes. and also milk too, yes. seems to make a big difference in that. So you yeah. want to be careful if you have that sort of history in your family to really be uh, very thoughtful about correcting these abnormalities yes. uh, beforehand. That's right. I, I agree. So oh, it's always good to know your family history. Um, find out was there autoimmune disease in your parents, your grandparents. Um, your siblings, and um, if there was, try and avoid gluten during pregnancy and don't give it to the child during the first 12 months of its life particularly. Um, you find gluten in wheat, rye, barley and oats um, because gluten can really hype up the immune system and cause inflammation in people who have a history of autoimmune disease or a family history. Yeah, especially yeah. inflammation in the brain, and that's, yes. and, and that's a, a big thing. And we ought to be very careful about uh, immunizations in the sense that we would be thoughtful about them. Yes. There are some individuals that can't tolerate a whole bevy of shots all at one time. Yes, I agree. And these, mm. these individuals, we'll talk about it, should be identified, you know, and the shot should, have been, should be spread out. The other thing is, is that uh, we never should uh, immunize a sick child, you know? True. Mm. Uh, Yes, those are uh, those are uh, uh, Im important things to, to consider. Yes, if a child has a, a fever or they've had an upper respiratory tract infection, they shouldn't be immunised until they're completely recovered, and the child should be given vitamin C because that reduces inflammation. It does, and you know, vitamin A is an antiviral, and yes. given in conjunction with the immunisations, there are drugs that can be taken that will minimise the the adverse effects of this and and cod liver oil or vitamin A is one of them and vitamin yes. C is another and they should yes. always be taken around the time that the child is immunized. I agree, you know, preferably for several weeks before, before the child is immunized, your vitamin C, your vitamin D, um, vitamin A, essential fatty acids and selenium because, you know, selenium helps glutathione to protect the cells against free radicals which could be generated in excessive amounts in the brain after a vaccination, yeah. yeah. So it's it's prevention, really, that's the key, isn't it? Um, it yeah. That, you know, it's it's much easier to do because once that disease starts and the inflammation starts, there is a chemical that pours out in the brain called quinolinic acid, and it causes mm. brain cells to self-destruct. Yes. And when that happens, you know, the situation becomes irreversible. Yes. The longer we go on with the situation, the more brain cells are lost. So yes. prevention is important and early intervention is the second. Yes, measure. I agree. And definitely, you know, anyone who's considering having children or who has already had children affected by autism should get Dr. Anderson's excellent book called Autism Prevention, Care and Management. And this is available 
um, from Dr. Anderson's website. Which is autism at 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 Abbas Place, A B B A S Place dot com. That's autism at Abbas Place, no comma dot com. Right. And um, also, you know, if you um, have trouble contacting Dr. Anderson, you can go through liverdoctor.com as well and we can forward on any emails because he's only too happy to help. And, you know, the amount of research that is available in this book and the incredible wisdom, practical help, is something that really every parent needs. So thanks a lot, Dr. Anderson, You're for welcome. being Thank with you. us today. Thank you, Dr. Kabul.